Welcome back. This is determining zone five. So up to this point for zones one to four, we've been using heart rate and lactate to determine the zones. For zone five, I recommend you determine the pace and the power directly. And we're gonna get into how we do that. So this table here becomes much less meaningful, your heart rate ranges, because you may be tempted to drive the heart rate up early and be going way harder than you need to. So we're gonna derive it directly. So let's get rid of that one and get rid of that one. Okay, so full profile. The first step before you launch yourself into a cycle of red zone training or a really intensity-based block where you're still going to be doing plenty of green zone training, but you're going to be focused on trying to raise the roof, so to speak, uh, is understanding your full profile. And what do we mean by full profile? Well, we mean you do a progressive step test. And by that, for swimming, it might be something like 5 by 400, descend 1 to 5, on 10 seconds rest. So it's a continuous effort and you're gonna be stepping up the effort each time. For the bike, I like five minute steps. Uh, I use an ergometer, so I don't need to think about the power and I step up. And for somebody that's sort of 75 to 80 kilos, we typically use 25 watt steps. And that really depends on where you expect to find your functional threshold, that second lactate turn point. You want to make sure that the steps you're taking will not result in jumping past a zone. And this is different than the 10 minute steps that I like when determining that first lactate turn point. So with the submax protocol, I like longer steps and shorter and smaller step height. With this protocol that's going to give you a full profile, Traditionally, we've used five minute steps and we've started the process of sampling lactate at the four minute mark. And we make sure we have a good reading before we go on to the next step. Now, even if you don't have access to lactate, I recommend you do the test. Now for the run test, typically it'll be 1600 meter repeats at the track if you're going outside. And the idea is you build to a target heart rate in the first 800, and then you hold that effort slash heart rate for the next 800. And ideally, as you learn how to do it, your 800s and your overall mile time is gonna be evenly paced. And then you step up by 10 beats per minute each step. And that's the outdoor protocol. Indoor, you can use a treadmill. And if you're using a treadmill, I recommend you have some way to calibrate that treadmill because treadmills are notorious for being inaccurate for speed. I use a North Pole Engineering run sensor and that lets me calibrate my speed. So if, uh, and if I'm using speed, I'll be stepping up the pace, the speed, and I'll be doing that gradually across the test. And similar, to the bike test, when I'm doing the full profile, it's five minute steps. And I wanna make sure that I have a good lactate sample each time. Now, why do we wanna do the full profile before we launch into red zone training? Can't we just start smashing ourselves and hope for the best? Well, my experience is you might be wasting your mojo with the red zone training if you don't really need it. What do I mean by don't really need it? Well, first point there, do you get faster when you increase the effort? If you're increasing the effort and you're not necessarily getting faster, then you need to focus on the low end rather than dosing yourself with the red zone work. So still continue to do quickness, but the quickness is gonna be moving quickly and skillfully for short durations on long rest, on long rest rather than doing these red zone sessions, which are directly targeting a very high sustained intensity for you, which is very demanding in terms of fatigue and demanding in terms of recovery. If you don't need it, don't do it. Keep focusing on the low end. The other reason, there's no quicker way to kick yourself into overtraining than to do a bunch of hard work 
when you're depleted or run down. You'll bring on illness, injury, and burnout. We don't wanna do that for you. So you wanna make sure you have a normal heart rate response as you're moving through your zones. And if you have access to lactate, a normal lactate response. Because in these submax tests, you can be overreached and tired and depleted, and it will appear that you are more fit. In other words, your power and your pace per heart rate and per millimole of lactate will look like it's improving. The curve will be going down and it'll be staying down. What will be missing is your ability to hit high intensity, high paces, and generate high amounts of lactate. That is a clear sign that you do not want to do a red zone uh, block uh, mesocycle. What you need to do is unload and get yourself in a healthy position again. And uh, it can be really tough to face that, but let me tell you, it's a lot better than getting shingles or wrecking your season. And I've seen it happen with myself and my friends when we didn't do the test to make sure our top end was still there. Now, the final rep of this progressive test, that there's information in the final rep. The final watts that you were holding or the final velocity that you were holding is a very good start point for the test that I'm gonna want you to do. But before we do that, let's just dig in. Last time I showed you a bike profile, let's dig into a run profile, just so you can see kind of how it works. Now we got the same thing here. I was stepping up. It was a 15 minute warm up and then five minute steps. Sample lactate uh, after five minutes here with my feet standing on the edge of the treadmill and I step up the whole way through. Now, my low end doesn't look as good as uh, it did late summer. This test was April, so this was a spring springtime test, but it does show you the same type of line and then splitting uh, the tempo zone in half like we talked about last time. But what I wanna talk about here is my final velocity, uh, the 315K pace. I only held that for about four minutes before I came pretty close to my max heart rate. So if I was seeking to understand what my red zone pace was for work, I would need to do a six minute test and I would want to know my velocity, my average speed for that six minutes. Now a good starting point for that, because I only lasted four here, would probably be a little bit slower than that. So I might try and hold 330K pace and see if I could hold that for six minutes. Now this was on the treadmill and I hadn't been doing a lot of fast running, so maybe I start out a little bit conservative. When you do the six minute test, you want to make sure that you don't blow up on it. So if anything, leave yourself a bit of a cushion. Remember, you're going to be doing your training for a long time. You don't need to max it out the first time you do a six minute test. All you need is a reasonable benchmark that you can apply in your training. So zone five, is gonna be determined by this six minute velocity. Now, next time I'm gonna talk you through my kind of make my case for why these different methods, the green zone, the tempo, and now the red zone work for you. It's got to do with energy management across your year and in your mesocycle and your weeks. We want to use your energy to make you faster not to optimize your ability to do tests. And I'll get into that a little bit more next time. Thanks for listening.